The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. Last week, the Governor of the Bank of Canada confirmed what millions of Canadians already know. Liberal spending is making life more expensive. Nine years of NDP Liberal deficits had led to a lost decade, lowering standards of living, record food bank usage and a housing crisis. Will the, do will the government finally commit to a dollar-for-dollar dollar rule that allow Canadians to feed their families and keep their homes? Great job, Phil. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I respect the member for Northumberland, and he is better than actually misrepresenting the words of the Governor of the Bank of Canada. The reality is the Governor of the Bank of Canada, in testimony since the budget, has said, and I quote, the budget does respect the fiscal guardrails that the government put in place. And I quote, that's what he said. And he said, quote, keeping the debt to GDP ratio on a declining track and importantly, keeping the deficit below 1% of GDP in future years, the budget commits to those guardrails and that is helpful. The Honourable Member from Northumberland, Peterborough South. I will quote uh, the Governor directly. He said that this Liberal budget is not helpful. It's more distraction, more denial, in order to cover up their record of massive deficits, which has led to over $54 billion of interest being paid in this, in this uh, budget alone. We'll pay more in the GST, we'll collect more in the GST, or collect more here than in the GST in terms of interest. We'll pay more in interest than we will in health care transfers. When will they finally get their deficits under control so that Canadians can eat and they keep their homes? Here, here. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, that is simply not true. I encourage people to read the testimony of the Governor of the Bank of Canada and news reports about that testimony. Here is what he said, and I am quoting precisely, keeping the debt to GDP ratio on a declining track and importantly keeping deficits below 1% of GDP in future years. The budget also commits to those guardrails going forward, and that is helpful. Those are the words of the Governor. People can just take a look at the transcript, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Salabool, St. Charles. Mr. Speaker, Quebecers are struggling. Mortgage renewals are hurting them. Mortgage rates are high, due in part to the chaotic management of public finances by this Prime Minister and the Bloc. Over the past nine years, more than $500 billion in additional spending has been voted, voted in by the Liberals and supported by the Bloc. That includes $115 billion in June 2022 for pipelines. And yes, the so-called Green Bloc voted for a pipeline. Will the Liberals on the Bloc take responsibility for the high cost of mortgages and of living? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians... Here, one party that has no ambition, no vision, and no plan. Mr. Speaker, Canadians have a choice to make. They have a choice to listen to a party that has no vision or a government that's investing in youth, in growth, in housing, in science, and in research. Mr. Speaker, here on this side of the House, we will continue to invest in Canadians because countries that have confidence invest in their people, and that's precisely what we'll do. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, au saint charles Mr. Speaker, the Conservative Party has a lot of vision and common sense, unlike the government opposite, which seems to have lost sight of that. The Bloc is doing no better than the Liberals. The Bloc supported $500 billion in extra spending. They've always voted against the budget, but they do vote for all of the budgetary appropriations. And that's why Quebecers and Canadians are struggling. Will the government ask the Bloc why they're always supporting them in their nonsensical programs? The, Mr. Speaker, Canadians watching understand that that's not common sense. It's nonsense in 2024 to have no ambition for the country, no vision no plan for the country at a time when we're in a full economic transition. People watching at home understand we're investing in science and research. We're investing in the next generation. We're investing in growth. It's the time for that. That's what we're doing. It's time to invest. We're a confident nation, and we will build the Canada of tomorrow together.